Hi, I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two curious ladies on an adventure to learn more about cooking, cannabis, and the fine art of gluttony. Join us every 10 days or so as we get high and make our way through a recipe. Step inside and let the consumption begin. <laughs> bum, bada, bum, bum, bum. We're back. <laughs> For the last of Brad's the cookbook. <laughs> That's right. We are sadly closing out our time with France the cookbook or Je suis cuisinier or there was another name too, I think, at one point. But obviously we are not done. We are barely, barely, barely into the book on our Patreon. But we are done for now with this portion of our journey. Like we said last time, we're not doing names at all. We're going to get into that at another time. So we're doing a second dessert. This one is super fun again. I'm making Gretchen do another egg-free thing. And so this time, it's eggless shortbread cookies. So this is going to be fun. Again, super simple ingredients. Hope it goes better. There's no caramel. So we know no it's going to go better yeah. than the yeah. last dessert we did. <laughs> it's certainly much easier. And I am glad you brought this to my attention. I will be very curious to see what the results are on this eggless shortbread. Something yeah. good for me, too. In a book filled with eggs, I will find the egg-free recipe. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> I don't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> so what are you smoking while we close out our time with Miss Jenny Metzio? I have another uh, Stinger Punch Summer Lemon Infused Pre-Roll, and I have no other information than that. It's not that lemony, unfortunately. I was, I'm was i a little disappointed in the lemon component, but it's, it's a nice smoke and it's a sativa, so I will be uplifted and lifty. <laughs> uplifted and lifty. <laughs> yes, I've seen that as a medical description for uh-huh. what to expect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what are you enjoying today, Becca? Well, still fruity like your lemon, but I have alien banana candy and... I don't taste any banana, but it is, there's a little candy taste that has a little sweetness to it. It's fun. It's got lemonine, beta caryophylline, beta myrcene, and 27.4% THC. No CBD. I'm ready. I like it. It feels like a good one for what we're doing today for just kind of mixing things around, making cookies. I love it. Yeah, we don't even have to have any real equipment for this one. It's just mix it up, roll it out, throw it in the oven. It's yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Our kind of recipe. Yeah, I'm feeling hesitant after the caramel last time. So I need, need an <laughs> easy win. Just, I can do this. You can do this. I can make cookies. I, I can I make fucking cookies. You can make fucking cookies. <laughs> we'll get you tuned in on the caramel at some point. It'll be fine. It need a little more practice. It's hard. So hard. We are going to finish out reading from the book by closing out the planning menu section. I know everybody was just on the edge of their seat after we stopped talking about the relative cost of food to its nutritional value. I know that was just such a cliffhanger. Riveting. (laughs) Riveting podcasting. Yeah, if you do not enjoy cooking or listening to recipes or food talk, this is not the podcast for you no No. you have to be prepared to listen to a lot of talk (laughs) about food yep so planning menus page 916 whenever possible create menus using seasonal ingredients out of season ingredients are usually expensive and they will not have as much flavor as when they are in season serve a light dish to start the meal to take the edge off hunger For the appetizer, offer raw vegetables, mixed salads, or hors d'oeuvres. Serve each person only with the amount they need. For less active adults, the evening meal should be light to balance the midday meal. The menus on pages 918 to 919 give examples of seasonal balanced meals. There are many occasions on which it is important to select the menu carefully. For the family, the dishes should be simple but not monotonous. For friends, serve simple but thoughtfully composed meals, each course of which should be cooked with care. 
Celebrations may be a pretext for forgetting about the need to economize, but one should not forget the principles of nutrition. It is possible to devise a delicious, plentiful meal, which is still very nutritious. When eating out, trust the specialties that are recommended. The restaurant wants to ensure that its clients are satisfied and remain loyal. In all cases, wines should be carefully chosen so that they harmonize with the dishes. If the wine's bouquet clashes with the flavor of a dish, both will be spoiled. End of planning menus, page 916. I don't know. That, uh, not as much discussion generation on that one. For the most part, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. That's how you well plan said. menus. She's so funny, though, with some of her, some of the things, like, for less active adults, the evening yeah. meal should be light to balance the midday meal. But then she never says for active adults. Or for it's only right. just for that if you're one. fat, yeah. <laughs> judgy, judgy, Jenny. Yeah. I, I think it. She, she's. It's a little funny too that she says you can have a celebration and it's a good excuse to kind of splurge and spend overspend a little bit. But she said you should never forget about nutrition, though. No matter what you're going to spend on food, of utmost importance, <laughs> nutrition. Nutrition. <laughs> Nutrition! <laughs> and then very interesting to me to throw in anything about eating out when it's yeah. a <laughs> recipe for cooking at home. Like it's a book for cooking at home. So who cares? Well, yeah, it's like eating out and then also wine pairing is part of like the eating out yeah. paragraph was very strange to me. It was like, wait, we got eating out, pairing, huh? And then full stop. Now we're done. <laughs> yeah, a little whip flashy at the end there. Overall, Always good advice. Mostly great wisdom. Yes, mostly great wisdom. <laughs> mostly great wisdom. Hi, Gluttony. Mostly great wisdom. <laughs> Subtitle. Oh, mostly great wisdom. <laughs> Let's see what she has to say about dining etiquette before we move on to cookies and close out our reading of France. France. The cookies. France. <laughs> Never got old. Okay, dining etiquette on page 923. The way a meal is organized is very important. Guests should be able to say that the dinner was good and properly served and everyone feel that special attention has been paid to them. The hosts have the responsibility for all the practical organization. The host should lead the conversation and the liveliness and good manners that will be maintained at the table. This is an important but delicate task. As the 18th century French gastronome Briat Savarin, close enough, I got a thumbs up from Gretchen, okay, said, inviting people to share your table amounts to taking responsibility for their happiness during the whole time that they are under your roof. A perfect dinner party depends on a well-devised menu, an elegant table, appropriate lighting, perhaps candelabras with candles. A sensible seating plan and efficient service. <laughs> guests must be given a warm welcome. The host should be ready to greet guests as soon as they arrive and go to meet them to take them into the living room or drawing room. A few friendly words will suffice to introduce the guests to each other. And that is all she says about Diane. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, that's not all she says, because that that's just like that kind of the intro. You also have like the setting the table, dinner party, like there's a whole several pages here that go on from there, but it's more than we want to get into at this point. So that's her at least opening salvo on dating etiquette, I guess would be a way to call mm -hmm. it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's very funny that she, it has to be an elegant table and... Perhaps candelabras with candles. Candelabras. Jesus. I had I skipped over that bit last night because I kind of like we just skimmed through things to review. <laughs> Missed the candelabras entirely. So I mean, I've been doing it so wrong for so long. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you really should have brushed up on your dining etiquette. 
<laughs> and, and and a sensible seating plan. Don't bring any unsensible yes. seating plans to the party, okay? We can't no. have that. No, no, no. Susan can't sit next to Diane. That would be uncomfortable. <laughs> right? <laughs> a few Ugh. friendly words will suffice to introduce guests to each other. What? <laughs> I don't know what yes. that like. Right? <laughs> what? And then you have to also meet them to take them into the living or drawing room when it is time to move into the living or drawing room, as we all do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take them into the living or drawing room. <laughs> no one calls it a drawing room anymore. Jeez, Louise. No. Like Gretchen said, there's a lot more in that section, including table arrangements, seating arrangements. She gets in flower arrangements. All flower arrangements. Stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait to find out what she says about flower arrangements. But we have a long way to go for the Patreon there because, yeah, that's at the back of the book. <laughs> Three years from now is when we'll get to the flower arrangements part. I hope. It will always be a mystery. (laughs) Let's get into cookies. And then we're going to really get into our shortbread. Cookies, page 761. Cookies come in many types, shapes, and sizes. They are made with the same basic ingredients, butter, sugar, and flour, in variable proportions, along with many additional flavorings. The way they are prepared and the cooking method give different results. Cookie dough can be made by hand or with an electric mixer, but in either case, as with pie dough, the dough should be worked lightly and quickly, which results in cookies with a short melt-in-the-mouth texture. The two main types of cookie dough are thick doughs, which are rolled out with a rolling pin, and soft doughs, which are placed on the baking sheet with a spoon. So we'll be making a hard A thick dough today. Yes, thick dough. We are rolling, rolling, rolling. So we need a rolling pin. We know that. Special equipment. Now we know that. Context cues. We'll need a rolling pin. That's all she says about cookies. The two types and just the the basic ingredients and the approaches, either electric or hand. Ours is a little bit of a combo of both of those today. Do you want to read the ingredients for our eggless shortbread? cookies of course I do Becca I always want to read the ingredients (laughs) I know you get so excited it's the best for our eggless shortbread we have half a cup or one stick of butter plus extra for greasing but not a lot for greasing just a little bit scant two-thirds of a cup super fine sugar one teaspoon vanilla extract three tablespoons of milk one pinch of baking soda, generous two cups of flour, plus extra for dusting. And prep time? Our prep time is 15 minutes and a cook time of 15 to 20 minutes. So we've seen all these ingredients before. Yeah, (laughs) at least once or twice. (laughs) At least once or twice. What are we going to do with this? We have preheated our oven to 350 degrees and lightly greased a baking sheet controversy around this we'll talk about it in a minute but lightly grease the baking sheet with butter then we are going to beat the sugar vanilla milk and baking soda together in a bowl in another bowl we're going to rub together the butter with the flour until it looks like breadcrumbs and then combine those two mixtures and knead lightly roll the dough out on a lightly floured work surface and cut into even sized cookies don't you Dare have uneven cookies. Place on the prepared baking sheet and bake for 15, 20 minutes or until golden brown. At least we got a descriptor at the end of this one about what we're looking for color-wise. Right? Unlike the pudding. (laughs) No, I was like, wait, where was that in the other recipe? Yeah. Missing. So this is pretty straightforward. Is that what you were going to (laughs) say? Yeah, but I was also going to say it's hilarious to me. This is still like a serve six on the quantity. That's not how you usually put cookie recipes. That's mm, right. Like, yeah, are these huge cookies? Two cups of flour for six people? <laughs> it's like, how many cookies are they each going to get? Uh, it's just super weird. We'll have to make sure we know it on the website, like how many cookies we each got so that you kind of get an idea, mm-hmm. like how much dough it really is. How big do you think you'll make yours? Like, what are you going to use to cut them with? I can't quite decide. I hadn't quite decided. 
I have new buddy cookie cutters. I, I have to use those. those. Yeah. Have to use those. I have okay. to use those. Maybe I'll so, just use a mason jar lid. Yeah. So yeah, pretty straightforward. I guess, okay, so let's talk about the buttering, the greasing the pan directly instead of you like we I had an inclination. I had already prepped my pan with wax paper, even though she said to use butter. But after discussing with Gretchen, she's gonna do the experiment on her side and I'm gonna stick to the recipe fully. <laughs> so tell me about this butter piece though, and versus like a wax paper. I mean it's the same function. You're preventing this dough from sticking to the pan. It's just using a physical barrier versus a different physical barrier. <laughs> <laughs> the paper is a slightly healthier way to do it because you are using that strictly physical barrier that is not going to be absorbed by your cookie. Whereas the fat can get absorbed into the cookie and help like make a crust. I'm not sure what my thought is on mm -hmm. parchment versus butter, but I figured we should probably do both because it's been a while since I've done a true hell or good experiment. Yeah. I get one in there. Yeah. So she'll do half and half on her side. I'll do all grease with butter and we'll see how it goes. This is another one of the questions we have about these recipes in terms of like we've been kind of saying like update 2023 sometimes but it's interesting to think would Jenny have written the same recipe to say grease the pan with butter if she had wax paper as a common tool in her kitchen that's a really good question just one of those curiosities like is this a function of the time or is this a flavor component a crust component like you were saying is, so it, she... is it specific for the recipe or is it because of the circumstances. So she's got two recipes on the previous page that do not grease the pan. I think every single one on the page with the eggless shortbread, they all get greased pans. So I was actually looking to see if she did grease, 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 not greased, grease, greased, greased. Yeah, I think it's grease versus I'm kind of thinking that's probably correct is that if she'd had parchment she would have used parchment well we'll never know <laughs> <laughs> ever ever <laughs> we'll never know we've already talked about equipment what world level is this then i think this is a one yeah. Yeah, it's not using any crazy equipment if you don't have a rolling pin use a, a, something else that's long and skinny yeah so. wine bottle wine bo bottles other types of bottles. I know I'm like a water bottle. I know nothing <laughs> else besides bottle right now. No other words. <laughs> no, no other cylindrical <laughs> items other than bottles. That's the only one. Your your vape pen might be too small, but you could try it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we get in the kitchen, then we are going to start with beating our sugar, vanilla, milk, and baking soda. Yes. Are we Let's ready do to this. do this? I think so. We have 36 minutes okay. left. Okay, we can do this. We can do go. this. We got it. Go, go, go. Here we are in the kitchen. We are getting ready to eat some shit up. Uh, <laughs> and then massage the other stuff. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, seems really weird. I've got two thirds of a cup of sugar, three tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a pinch of baking soda all in a bowl. So we're going to beat, beat that up with a little uh, whiskey action. I guess. Let's do it. Here we go. That's done. Yeah. As I said, we are debating the, the virtue of using a mixer to mix it or just beating it by hand. I don't think we're going to get any different result with a mixer than we did by getting beating it by hand. <laughs> so. We're not cleaning the mixer then, even nope. if it's a hand mixer. No, thank mm -mm. you. Nope. Okay, done. so on to the next then is the flour and the butter that we want to massage into breadcrumbs. Yep. One whole stick of butter, yes, please. Oh my gosh, it's so soft, I can barely pick it up. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Actually, mine's not too bad since it's like quite cold here and I don't have the heat turned up that high. Was there salt in this one either? No. Jeanette. Maybe because there's a whole stick of butter. Oh, probably, and the butter was salted. Yeah, she didn't specify, but I I used salted. You did too, and 
I did not. Yes, no, I I you almost didn't use unsalted. I own. Or wait, you used unsalted. No, I used salted. You did use salted. Okay. Yes, I did. Yes. I am using unsalted. I see. That was confusing. Yes. I'll well, I'm kind of mine. Okay, I should too, I guess. I'm kind of breadcrumby. I'm getting there. I'm almost there. I feel like there's some finer stuff at the bottom and some larger chunks in the middle here that uh, I need to work a little bit more. But I'm oh. almost done. Evenly distribute. Hopefully. That's good. That looks like breadcrumbs. Okay. So are you going to pour the liquid into the flour mixture now to mix it up before we pour it out to roll? Yes. Not sure if I might grab a spatula or something to do this. Yeah. At least initially. Oh, no, that smells like onions. Let's not use that. You're using your hands now? Yeah. I'm just kind of squishing it together more than anything else because I think it's yeah. well mixed. And so I'm just sort of pressing it to make one mass. Mine's very, very dry. Is it? Yeah. Mine's okay. Um, is it really or... crumbly? Yeah, it's not really sticking together. You could put a maybe a half a teaspoon more of milk in there if you wanted, okay. if you felt like it was way too dry to roll. Okay, yeah. I don't think it'll roll right now, so. Just a bit of milk. Mine's like really borderline where it's just slightly dry, but I feel like that's better than you don't want it to be too, too wet. wet. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying be gentle because your humidity is low. It's possible that you do need a little bit more milk. So, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to be so sticky that then it's impossible to roll the other direction because it just sticks <laughs> yeah. to everything. So yeah. like, got to hit a fine balance here with the moisture. A thick dough indeed, though. Yes. Oh, I forgot to add sh uh, salt in. Oh, well. We'll just test it fully as intended. As is. Is uh, yours in one? Like, is it one cohesive e ball? Pretty pretty close to, like, one. Yeah, I've got, like, a flat disc right now. but Is it sticking to your hands? No. I mean, light, lightly, but not. Not really. Not really. Okay, so your dough's out on the surface. You're about to roll. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. Mine is still so crumbly. Let me see it. I think you're okay. Okay. I mean, the edges are going to be pretty crumbly. Yeah, let me watch you roll it. That looks okay. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How thick are we trying to roll this out to? Quarter of an inch, maybe? Okay. It just says, I think it just says roll out and cut into even yes, cut cookies. Exactly. No guidance here. <laughs> Cookie size and shape. Done. <laughs> Great. Hi, buddy. How you doing, Lucy? Luciferious bunny. Oh, Lucerious. Lucerious. I'm willing to go with it. He's got like six names. <laughs> yeah, he does. He has so many names. Demon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I was like, Lucifer. No, it's not Lucifer. <laughs> Close enough. Oh. Enough. Okay, are you you're cutting? I'm cutting. Well, here we go. Oh no! Oh no! Should have moved my dough disc before cutting. Make sure that it wasn't stuck. How many are you gonna put on the pan? It looks like I can really only get eight of them on there. That's what I'm thinking too. Well, should we go? Do you have eight ready? Or you're almost ready? Do it. We start with fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay. See you in the future. See you in the future. Of course, your future. <laughs> Here we are, slightly in the future. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes. And it was just 15 minutes for both of us. We didn't go yeah. up to that 20 mark. No, oh, they are beautifully, like, just the perfect color brown. I think Cooked. mine could use a little bit more color on the top, but I was telling Gretchen the bottom is pretty dark, so I didn't want to, like, burn the bottom trying to get yeah. color on the top. Mine is also fairly dark underneath. Oh, look at this. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so let's Here's talk a little, differences. Differences yeah. between the, the two bunnies here. Uh, we have a dark bunny, and that's the one that was cooked in the butter. So we got a lot yeah. more even browning on the bottom of the cookie than the one with the parchment. Yeah, so, the one with the parchment only has browning kind of on one side, side. and even then it's like darker in one spot. Right off the bat, visually... The butter cooked more evenly across the bottom in terms of getting like the right crunch and stuff across mm -hmm. the whole thing. Taste test. Looks, looks right. 
They're very still quite warm. <laughs> yeah, still hot. Ooh, I love it. Really nice short bready texture. Butter one, so crisp. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, parchment. No difference. Okay. No difference. Taste wise, no. even the butter. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever thought this hard about cookies. Uh-huh. It tastes really good. Hmm. Key importance: the texture. Like very that texture varies too where that color variation is. So that this one has a more consistent bite to it. So the wax paper, the the you don't have that same fun crunch with every bite necessarily. Right. I kind of think this is one of my favorite cookies. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss the salt? Because we didn't end up salting. I'll have to throw some salt on top of a couple of them and see. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. We both ended up with a few more cookies that we have to make. Are you going to do them on butter? Probably. I'm probably yeah. going to wax it back up with the butter and bake them with butter. Yeah. Okay. Hard to argue with the result. Hard to argue. I did end up putting, I'm going to say, half a cup of milk in mine. Oh, wow. It was quite a lot. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Maybe a quarter, not a full half. A quarter. A couple tablespoons, like quite a few tablespoons. I wouldn't have thought your humidity was that far off, but it is rather wet here, so entirely possible. Yeah. But. It's just weird. Sometimes yours, your doughs are dry, and sometimes my doughs are dry, and we don't really know the hows and the whys. No. no. Sorry, I'm flipping all the cookies over now to get a better idea of like what the cookies look like on underneath. Yeah, check them all. So the ones on the paper, the ones on one end are lighter. The one, the one on the first... The other end of it is dark, like the butter cookies. Mm-hmm. But the ones on the butter are more consistently brown, mm. even in the darkest one that was on the parchment. I see. Which is this guy. So you had one on the parchment that was pretty consistently cooked all around on the bottom. But yeah. The butter ones, all of them were. Yeah. Informative. Informative. What a delicious way to close out Frost. for now. Our France, Jeanette Mathieu, journey through 1930s France cooking. What fun it's been. Delightful. Yes. Delightful. Check us out on Patreon. For the love of God, join our Patreon. (laughs) We are still going. We are going to be going for a long time over there with this cookbook. More to come over there and exciting stuff coming up next over here. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And off we go. Off we go. Oh, oh, hot coconut. I know. Amazing. Two times in a row. Let's see if we can do it for a third. (laughs) Professional again. Almost, yeah. (laughs) Okay, let's get out of here.